Terry Vanderheiden here, and today we're going to talk to a good friend of mine, nature photographer David Bozik. What he's got set up here is how to capture frogs with in stop motion. So what he'll do is he's got a triggering device set up, and the strobes will go off at a certain time in order to capture these frogs jumping in the air. It's pretty slick. So Dave, why don't you walk us through what we've got here in terms of our equipment? Oh, one is that you've got the, the photography part is the camera set up on the tripod. You've got the lighting, which in this particular case is all artificial lighting. Um, it controls uh, my ability to be able to stop the action. Um, if I use just regular uh, shutter speeds, there's no way with the amount of light that I can actually control that. So, and then the other, uh, the third part is actually the mechanism that is going to do the capturing itself, uh, setting off the camera, the triggering system, and uh, the laser beam setup. I'm a kind of put it together yourself kind of guy. So, uh, PVC pipe for a frame. These are some old light stands. I've got three heads um, mounted on this thing, and each one is um, uh, slaved off of each other. Um, so um, they're all manual flashes. There's no automatic feature in them. Okay. And uh, I have one that's in, mounted inside this soft box that gives the main portion of light when the uh, the uh, particular organism is leaping out of the, the chamber, which you'll see here in a little bit. So you okay. use this to soften the light. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, to catch uh, highlights, a uh, little bit of rim lighting from the background and stuff, um, I've got this, this light here. Um, kind of highlights and separates um, the frog itself from the background. Mm -hmm. I have adding a little bit of light here. It's it's just it's almost like you're photographing a model, which in fact you are. I've so also are got another unit that I set that illuminates the background, so I can strip the background out. This just fires and illuminates this uh, backdrop. And the backdrop okay. is blue and it's all blue. It blue in this case because the frogs are going to be green. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> so it, flips out, it flips over and it actually has a green side. It's so. a lot easier yeah. to clip out the exactly. The, product or, or in this case the the frog so let me tell you are these strobes are these all set on full power no as a matter of fact the, the one that does the rim lighting it's at like 128th power and um i believe this one right now is set at about a 64th power so, so it's very so very, very little light. light yeah because the strobes are so close to the subject that you don't need a whole lot of power, which is really nice because I can I can shoot all day and hardly use any power from the units at so all. So one of the other reasons of having just a little power in the yeah. strobes is that they go off real fast. Exactly. Right. So the, when they go off fast, they're yeah. going to stop Stro more action. Strobes can't really control the brightness that they put out. They put out a certain intensity, but the longer it flashes, the more light you get out of it, as opposed to actually dimming a bulb from a, a ceiling where you can control light and dark. Well, it doesn't work that way. It actually, the longer that flash duration is, the more light you get out of it, but it's putting out the same the whole time. So, so then you've built a uh, area here that allows the frog just to go in one area and it looks like you've got a couple of pieces of wood covered by some plexiglass so in this case the frog can only go out that one shoot which would thereby then fire i assume this uh, laser beam that goes between here correct exactly um and it takes a fair amount of time whenever you have any kind of subject um probably the most difficult thing when you set something like this up is knowing your subject how fast is it going to move? Where is it going to move? In the case of frogs, they're fast and they hop. So it, it's different than if I was photographing lizards, they go kind of directional, they can run and they're pretty much on uh, single planes that they're working with. Frogs is everywhere. So you have to isolate, you have to control where they're going. So the unit that controls all the, all the power of this light is called the stop shot, correct? Yes. Great. So I think first we need to uh, go get some frogs. There you go. Um, habitat preference is uh, one of the things that you study uh, when you're going uh, after a specific species. This particular one, which is the uh, Pacific, it's now called Pacific Chorus Frog. It used to be called the uh, Pacific Tree Frog. And um, locating the animals, once you can hear one calling, you know, a voice is really good in the springtime. Most things, most males, whether it's bird or uh, the amphibians like this, are calling. So they're easy to kind of locate basically where they are. Once you come into the, the area, the vocalizations stop. So where do I look? 
I look in uh, around the pond itself and I can see the, the types of vegetation. This particular frog likes to hug in close to the, the vegetation. They don't want to be out in the open, a uh, heron, egret, snatch it up and um, they become their meal. So um, along the edges here we find that there's a lot of leaf litter from this uh, winter. And what they do is they're coming out this time of the year. There's also um, a lot of, you can see there, if you look into the water, you can see there's lots of little egg clusters. They've already been calling the last two weeks. And they're laying their eggs in just in along under the vegetation. Okay? So they climb out onto these leaves and stuff. They're partially in the water, keeps their body somewhat cool. But then they also get to warm up on the top side. So they're getting their sunlight as well. Now we just, but the, one, the most important thing is the wildlife itself. These were um, particular uh, species here in my own pond. I brought it up back in the studio. Most of the time I photograph in the field, it never leaves the field. I photograph it, and put it back exactly where you got it. One of the things I do with this particular unit here is when I have an organism that is coming out quite quickly. Um, let's say it's uh, the tongue of a, a chameleon uh, is going to be targeting an insect. I have to be able to judge when the camera goes off, when it gets triggered, and by the time the shutter goes up, the flash goes off, there's a little bit of a lag time. Where is that tongue going to be? Is it going to be right at the insect? Is it going to be just coming out of the mouth or whatever? In this case, it's the frog. What I do is I just I have a, a ruler that I set into this particular chamber. And as it slides through, it will come out and it will trip the beam. Okay. If I take it and I go a little bit faster to simulate about the speed that the frog is jumping, okay, it lets me know about how far the frog will be when um, the, the shutter actually goes off. And what I'll do is I, I take like you know several test shots and then I'll look at the different images and it will give me a formatted area of view that I know if I make sure that my framing contains that area, then I will have everything in the picture. So we're going to put a frog in this chamber and uh, hopefully he'll eventually jump out the front, trigger the camera. There's the frog looking at us. Oh, there he goes. And it's done oh, just like fast. Just like that. Yeah. And yeah. And that's how quick they go, Tara. <laughs> that's why you certainly can't and you certainly can't time it. Thanks for watching. So today we've gone through and shown how you can capture frogs in mid-flight. Go ahead and try it yourself. You may have to get a little bit of equipment, but it's really rewarding and a lot of fun. Thanks, Dave.